Could we only use starships for moon landings, meaning no SLS or other systems involved? This is a question that I've been asking myself ever since the lunar starship was unveiled. Sure, we know that Starship is excellent for Mars, and it was basically developed with the goal of building a human settlement on Mars. But could we also use it for landing on the moon and for building moon bases? Well, let's try to think about a way in this video, how we could use only Starship launches in order to build ourselves one or several human settlements on the moon. Now you might be saying, hey, what are you talking about? Why should we even try to use only starships for moon landings? What is wrong with the current NASA Artemis missions that are planning to land astronauts on the moon with the SpaceX moon lander called the SpaceX HLS, which stands for Human Landing System? Well, the problem is the following. It is really expensive and thus very likely not sustainable. Because for every moon landing as part of the NASA Artemis missions, we will need an entire space launch system rocket to launch. And this thing will be thrown away in its entirety every time after every single launch. Currently, the cost of one single space launch system, in short SLS, stands at a whopping $1 billion. This would be a recurring cost for every single mission, because as we said, the SLS is a non-reusable rocket, it is thrown away every time after every launch. As you might have guessed, this is not only not sustainable from a space junk perspective, adding new space debris with every launch, but no, it is financially simply unsustainable. Wouldn't it be thus much nicer to use only starships for future moon landings? meaning only use fully reusable systems and not throw anything away. In order to land one starship on the moon, we will need to do the following. We first need to launch a tanker starship, which is a starship that will contain large amounts of rocket fuel. In this case, liquid methane and liquid oxygen, which are the basic propellants of starship. Then we need to fuel this thing up for that, we will need to launch 6 to 8 additional starships, which will have leftover fuel that will then be transferred to this tanker starship in low Earth orbit. After this thing has been fully fueled up, we launch our starship HLS moon lander. We then dock the starship HLS to the tanker starship and then transfer the fuel from the tanker to the HLS. Then the HLS undocks and initiates the so-called translunar injection burn where it will leave Earth orbit for the Moon. When arriving at the Moon, it will need to initiate a deceleration burn in order to slow down so as to be able to enter a stable lunar orbit. Then, after reaching this orbit, it will decelerate even more and thus land on the surface of the Moon. The astronauts on board can explore and they can already deploy cargo which they brought with them, lunar rovers or even some habitat modules for future bases. Ok, so far so good. Nothing has been thrown away up to this point and we are still using fully reusable hardware which is very nice and also very cheap since SpaceX will just have to pay the cost of the fuel because everything as we said will be reused, nothing will be thrown away. The problem is the following though. The Starship HLS will only have enough fuel left in order to return to lunar orbit. But then it would need to dock to another spacecraft in order to transfer the astronauts, since the HLS itself will not have enough fuel left in order to return back to Earth. Indeed, this is a problem. You can't just leave the HLS flying around in moon orbit, because this moon orbit will be unstable and thus there is a risk that the HLS will crash sooner or later onto the moon, which is not such a nice thing when you have people living down there in bases. So what could we do in order to use only starships? Could we maybe create propellant for starship on the moon? Well, the problem is that starship, as we said, runs on liquid methane and liquid oxygen. Now creating oxygen on the moon is the easy part. You can obtain it from water ice and there is plenty of water ice at the lunar south pole. But for the methane, 
we would need carbon. And carbon is really not abundant on the Moon. This is where liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen moon landers would have a huge advantage because you could easily create their propellant from water ice. Both hydrogen and oxygen can be extracted from water since water is made up of oxygen and hydrogen. So that's a bummer because how do we get our fuel for Starship? Well, yes, Starship fuel is made up of methane to a large part, that is true, but don't forget that the other part is oxygen. And indeed, mass-wise, Starship uses 3.6 times more oxygen than methane. And we said you could obtain a lot of oxygen from water ice on the Moon. So you would only have to bring excess methane to the Moon and you could fully reuse the Starship HLS. Because most of the mass, as we said, is oxygen, which you can create on the Moon. Indeed, if SpaceX could send an additional tanker Starship into a so-called near rectilinear halo orbit and the tanker would store liquid methane, then you could dock with the tanker, refuel the methane and the oxygen, as we said, you created on the Moon from water ice and voila, you would have a fully fueled up Starship HLS. That Starship HLS would then have enough fuel to even fly back to Earth and then dock, for example, with a regular Starship that will be launched from Earth in low Earth orbit and this Starship will have a heat shield and then the astronauts will transfer to the regular Starship and land back on Earth. Because we saw that Starship even now was able to withstand the re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. And now the astronauts would have returned from the Moon and nothing would have been thrown away. All systems would have been reused and so the only recurring costs would be the propellant for all the Starship launches. And we said we'd need one Starship launch for the HLS moon lander itself, then another launch for the Starship tanker, then at least six more to refuel the tanker. And then we'd need maybe a few more to refuel another tanker which is then parked in a near rectilinear halo moon orbit, fueled up with an over-proportional amount of liquid methane. So let's say realistically all in all at least about 12 Starship launches. Now that might sound like overkill, but think about how little this would actually cost because you're not throwing anything away. You have only fuel as a recurring cost and the propellant will be hilariously cheap. In order to refuel one Starship, you will need $1 million as propellant cost, which has been estimated by SpaceX. So think about it. After the initial costs, we're talking $12 million in recurring costs for a single landing of astronauts on the Moon with only SpaceX Starships. And we remember that the current NASA Artemis mission has recurring costs of at least $1 billion because that is how much the SLS rocket actually costs. So using only Starships would be a factor of 100 cheaper per mission. Now, of course, it's clear there are also challenges to overcome with this approach. For instance, we would need good mechanisms to reduce the boil off of the methane in the tanker Starship in Moon orbit because when heated by the Sun, the methane in there would turn gases and expand and would then need it to be vented, else the pressure would get dangerously high at some point. So blow-off mitigation strategies would be paramount. Also, the Moon orbit tanker would itself be needed to be refueled as well. So you would need to let tanker Starships fly there and refill it and still leave enough so that the tankers can return to Earth. Or you could of course throw them away, but that would of course drive up the costs, since ideally we wouldn't want to throw anything away. The whole approach sounds complicated and yes it is, but it has the insane promise of basically being able to fully reuse all starships, even the HLS, and never throw anything away you would have insanely low recurring costs of only $12 million per launch without any additional hardware. And you could then really build yourself a sustainable moon base at hilariously low costs. 
You could even go further and at some point use the older Starship HLSs as moon bases themselves. Just turn them on the side, lay them down horizontally and then cover them with lunar regolith to protect against micrometeorites and against the radiation. And you can use their entire interior volume, even the propellant tanks themselves. So I think this approach would be perfect, it would be ideal. And I really hope that the outdated SLS will at some point be completely ditched so that we can cheaply build gigantic, truly gargantuan moon bases with relatively low effort. Sometimes the obvious solution is a bit more complicated than we would like, but this approach, a combination of a moon orbit tanker and oxygen fuel creation on the moon, would be really a game changer for our future exploration of the moon. We would only need starships for our future moon bases and nothing else. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe because we'll continue putting out lots of videos on fascinating technological developments in human spaceflight and other areas. And please consider supporting us on Patreon or via a YouTube membership because this would allow us to make even more and better videos. Thank you so much for watching wherever you are. Have a wonderful day and see you next time.